Hey there, everybody. Welcome to my movie vlog. Now, the movie news feed is a segment on the John Campus Show, but I thought there was a number of you guys who enjoy getting your quick fix of movie news in the morning, so that's why we're giving you this thing as a separate video. So let's dive into it. First up, Colin Trevorrow has been confirmed as the director for the third installment of the new Jurassic Park films. Trevorrow helmed the first film, Jurassic World, to a monstrous $1.67 billion result at the box office and is serving with Steven Spielberg as executive producer in the next installment, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. He's working with Pacific Rim Uprising scribe Emily Carmichael on the script for the third film, which was announced last month by Universal and given a June 11th, 2021 release date. This is the first film Trevorrow has attached himself to since he was removed from Star Wars Episode Nine and replaced with J.J. Abrams. And you know, personally, I loved his film Safety Not Guaranteed, and I thought Book of Henry was not nearly as bad as some people made it out to be. Next up, Ron Howard, director of the upcoming Solo, A Star Wars Story, has taken to his Twitter account to give an update on the status of the film. Howard said the following, Hashtag May 25th, edit is locked, score is done, right on schedule. Hope you check Solo out and find it fun. Howard was responding to a fan's tweet expressing some concern over the movie. Solo, A Star Wars Story has had a lot of uncertainty surrounding it ever since the removal of Lord and Miller as the directors over creative differences. Then, an unusually late arrival of the first trailer. All of that worry may not be important, though, to the success of the film, as Box Office Magazine has just reported that they are currently tracking Solo to open to around $150 million on an opening weekend. Solo, A Star Wars Story hits theaters on May 25th. And you know, maybe if Solo was being directed by anybody else, I'd be worried too, but the man who directed Backdraft will bring it home. Next, speaking of box office results, Steven Spielberg's Ready Player One has taken the number one spot at the box office this weekend, taking in just over $41 million. Coming in second was the Tyler Perry film, Acrimony, making $17 million. In third spot is Black Panther, making another $11 million, bringing its worldwide total up to an impressive $1.27 billion. In fourth spot is the faith-based film, I Can Only Imagine, making another $10.7 million, bringing its total to over $55 million on just a tiny $7 million budget. And rounding out the top five is Pacific Rim Uprising, dropping from first to fifth in just its second weekend, making only $9.2 million domestically and taking a 67.3% drop. According to NBC, Ready Player One is now Steven Spielberg's best opening in over a decade, following Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of Crystal Skull, which launched to over $100 million in 2008. Aside from his film The BFG, Spielberg has lately favored smaller historical dramas instead of the big-scale blockbusters of his heyday. And look, Ready Player One is fantastic. It's great that it came in first at the box office, but it still didn't do nearly as well as it should have, and we'll talk about that a little bit later in the show. Next up, Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle was probably the biggest surprise hit of 2017, making over $400 million domestically and around $950 million worldwide. The movie, starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson, is now continuing its success on the home video scene. According to Variety, the film bowed in the top spot on both the NDP Video Scan overall disc sales charts, which tracks combined DVD and Blu-ray disc sales, as well as the dedicated Blu-ray disc sales chart for the week ending March 20. Warner Brothers' Justice League dropped to the number two spot on both charts, selling 35% as many copies as Jumanji. The superhero team-up adventure, which earned $229 million at the domestic box office, did debut at number one on both charts last week. You know, Jumanji has surprised on several levels, obviously on the financial one, sure, but it also surprised us with how good it was. I don't think anybody's expecting it to be as thoroughly entertaining as it was. I'm really happy to see it succeeding the way it surprised us with its quality. And finally, remember that great Tom Hanks, Gina Davis, 1992 film, A League of Their Own? Well, according to reports, Amazon, the same company bringing The Lord of the Rings to series, is now also bringing A League of Their Own to a half-hour TV show as well. From Engadget, it's too soon to learn about the casting, but Broad City's Abby Jacobson and Mozart in the Jungle's Will Graham are poised to both write and executive produce the show. It's still focused on the creation of the all-woman pro baseball league in 1943 and the story of the Rockford Peaches, although it's safe to presume that the movie's cast will not be reprising their original roles. For example, the series won't include the central characters of Dottie, played by Gina Davis, or Kit, played by Lori Petty, either. 
Apparently, Amazon sought out and got the blessings of both Gina Davis and director Penny Marshall before moving forward on the project. And that'll do it for today's installment of the Movie News Feed.